chapter verses 1 through 4 and uh, we thank God again for Reverend Joshua another uh, associate minister here with us in support and then a uh, special tribute and condolences and we uh, uh, we know the weather is inclement and uh, uh, we have to be in Levensworth at a certain time so those of you that uh, are going to be on program to speak we know we all love Sister Saberla, we can all stand up here and talk forever about her because she lived a well life and she done a lot of things that were great things, but time won't permit us to do it. So I'm going to ask that you would please, sir, please, ma'am, limit your remarks to uh, two minutes or three, if you, if you would, please, sir, please, ma'am. And then we'll have... Um, one of these speakers will be Gary Kennard, Brett Kennard, Carmen Kennard, and John Adams, and Mrs. Helen Burdett. And then uh, Sister Gloria Sipple will come, and then uh, Reverend Keith Collier uh, from the Christ of Demon, Redeemer AME Church. And then we'll have another musical selection going up yonder, and then we'll come back with the eulogy. Uh, I always say that when Someone has given their life to the Lord and has lived for the Lord. It's not a funeral. It's a celebration. Uh, it's a home going. And uh, I know Sister Jones wasn't a sad person. She was an uplifted person and uplift you. So uh, lift your spirits up and let's rejoice at this time because she's with the Lord. She's not Amen. suffering anymore. So she's free. So thank God that he loved her enough to set her free. So I'm going to ask now if uh, the music, those of, I believe, Reverend uh, DeBose is coming with the selection. Let's say man as he comes. <laughs> I would have told you, 
I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, yeah. I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, there ye may be also. And whither I go, ye know, and the way ye know. senior generation of the Kennard family. Mm -hmm. My father's youngest sister, more commonly known to me as Aunt Trevilla. Now, Aunt Trevilla had no children of her own. So, I don't know about your other cousins, mm -hmm. but I received an extra helping of love. Oh. I received an extra helping of praise for my accomplishments, as evidenced by the very happy and expressive way in which she spoke. Mm -hmm. I try and demonstrate that for you, but I think I hurt myself. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, if, if you knew her, you know what I mean. <laughs> Aunt Shabirla loved to collect photographs. As a matter of fact, I remember looking through some of those old photographs and uh, asking her, well, who is this? Who is that? How are they related to us? And, uh, my questions were many and rapid, so much so that she finally got enough. <laughs> and <laughs> and uh, her, her, her personality changed a little bit. And uh, again, if you knew her, you know what I mean. Uh, you know, fortunately, it wasn't until I became a seasoned adult that I was able to experience the flip side of her wonderful, wonderful personality. Again, if you knew her, you know what I mean. Okay? I remember the evening of my high school graduation back in 1967. Aunt Chabrilla found a cat out in front of our house on 29th Street. She loved that cat for maybe 10, 15 years. And chances are my neighbors still wondering whatever happened to their cat. <laughs> Aunt Chabrilla had a lot of love to give. Truly, I will miss her. Amen. My name is uh, Brett Kennard, and Sir Brother was my dear aunt. About six weeks ago, my wife Joyce and I visited Shabrella, and uh, <clears throat> in our conversation, there were two words that she used repeatedly, and that was God and love. And at the time, I did not know that that would really be the last time that I spoke with Shabrilla, but it was. And I'm so happy that we had the exchange that we had because there was a lot of meaning in what she said in those two words. This is my interpretation of what she was saying. And we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. For those God foreknew, <clears throat> he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, mm -hmm. that he might be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. And those he predestined, he also called. Those he called, he also justified. Those he justified, he also glorified. What then shall we say in response to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? Yeah. He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us, 
how will he not also along with him graciously give us all things? Mm. Who will bring any charge against those whom God has chosen? If God is, God who justifies. Mm -hmm. Who then is the, the one who condemns? No, Christ Jesus who died more than that, who was raised to life, is at the right hand of God and is also interceding for us. Mm. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble, or hardship, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or danger, or sword? As it is written, for your sake we face death all day long. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. No one in all these things. Mm -hmm. We are more than conquerors through more. him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, mm. neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height, depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. And God love, I should love. Good morning. My name is Carmen Kennard, and I guess I am the only surviving niece of Shabrilla Jones, even though she has many grandnieces. And I want to say that even though Shabrilla was always a part of my life, our relationship took on a, a different perspective about five years ago. Now, while I'd always loved Shabrilla as an aunt, the way one loves a family member, it wasn't until our journey started together that I came to love her as a person and pre appreciate her unique qualities and ultimately her strength, which I'll be talking about. When I first started caring for Shavala, she admitted that Russell had always done everything for her, and she would laugh with her little distinct laugh about that to me. And I saw what started as dependence and what some would even perceive as weakness over the five years that I was caring for her evolve into strength, which Shavala demonstrated over and over again. And here are some of those ways. First, most of statistics will show that widows and widowers will not live more than about one and a half years past the death of their spouse. Mm -hmm. Through Shabrilla's strength, though, she did so for almost five years after Russell's death. Mm -hmm. Second, Shabrilla held down her home on Sycamore Street until at age 90, we were able to convince her that it was not safe for her to stay there any longer as her health was deteriorating. I had signs up don't go down the stairs by yourself. Uh, we had medical alert bracelets and all sorts of things, but we worried about her as, as she became more unstable. And it took strength for her to acknowledge that she needed to be in a different environment. It also took strength for her to leave a house that she'd known for so many years and had so much love associated with that. Mm -hmm. Shirella ended up enjoying her stay, though, at the assisted living apartment in Lee Summit that she established and prided herself on having made this big leap, again, because of her own strength. Third, after being just short of two years in August of 2014, Shirella fell and in doing so needed to have surgery for a brain bleed on her head. So once again, though, it was through her strength that she should survive what would have been a fatal occurrence for most of us. Shavrola was my father's sister, and uh, over the, the past several months, she kept telling me about um, a dream that she had had where my dad was standing alongside a beautiful woman and said, Shavrola, I want you to meet Mama. <laughs> now, Shavrola's mother had died when she was three years old, and Shavrola couldn't remember her mother. She had a picture of her in her wallet and a, another uh, painting that my aunt had made of, of her mother, but she talked about longing to finally meet her mother, mm. and that finally day when they could come together. So a final example of Shirola's strength is this. Now as a nurse and now a nurse practitioner, I have professionally, as well as personally, 
met and, and been with a lot of people that have died. But Chervola was one of the few that I've encountered that looked death in the eye and was not afraid of it. Some of you may know that my aunt died from complications of the flu. And to treat her illness, Chevrolet had to have a very uncomfortable helmet, like a device, placed over her face to assist her in her breathing when she was hooked to a ventilator. And she allowed this to happen for four days and then said to me very candidly, Carmen, I don't want to spend the last days of my life like this. You know, I want to be able to die peacefully. And her strength was clearly stronger than mine through that because I kept asking her, Chevrolet, are you sure? Do you know what that means? And, and, and I knew that um, I, my role was to fulfill what her wishes were, not my own. And I, I allowed her to go into palliative care. During her last days, Chevron reassured me over and over again that she was at peace and she was not afraid of death. She talked of the various blessings that she had through the years. She said, Carmen, I've been so blessed with so much through the years and how appreciative she was for them as well as for all of you, her dear friends. And with a smile on her face, she said to me that she was looking forward to finally seeing her mother, like in her dream that she had. And she was looking forward to seeing BC and my dad and, and her sisters and her, her, her own dad and Russell. And so in her dying, Chevrolet again showed a tremendous source of strength that few of us ourselves could ever do so. Our five years together were quite a journey, but God put all of the right people on her path to assist in the process. They're all captured in the program, but certainly um, not minimizing that, you know, her dear neighbors there, Nate and um, then certainly Lola uh, Winters, uh, her, her good friend Rita, the, uh, the church that took her in, and you'll hear more about that, and many, many others along that path. And I do want to acknowledge the assistance that Sharola obtained from my husband, David, and my daughter, Ashley, because I couldn't have done it without them. David moved Sharola three or four times and did so many countless household tasks that I otherwise was not equipped to do. And Ashley would go over and, and do things like play cards with Sharola and play Uno with her and just spend time with her. And after she moved to Lee Summit, she would uh, take her to her hairstylist every two weeks or to doctor's appointments and more. So in closing, though I will miss Shabrella immensely, I know that she is finally at peace and is well with my soul. Oh. Rest well, dear Aunt Shabrella. You have fought the good fight and you are to be commended for a job well done. Thank you. Amen. Now, um, her dear friend, Shabrella's dear friend, um, Helen Burnett, is not able to be here today, and so um, Brett was nice enough to obtain um, feedback and information from, from uh, Helen Burdett through John Adams, and so I will now read what uh, Brett collected and was written. Remembering Chevrolet Kennard Jones. How well do we remember Chevrolet Kennard? As a very attractive young lady, a graduate of Sumner High School in 1940, Along with a friend of many years, Helen Simpson, Chevrolet joined a group of single young women, namely the Socialites, whose objective was to promote social and civic opportunities for Negroes and provide community service because those items were limited in 1940. Mm -hmm. Chevrolet and Helen were charter members. These two young ladies sought either further education or marriage by 1950. Helen, in the fall of 1940, to a very dynamic young man, Alfred Burdett, and Chevrola, after completing junior college employment, and employment. So after two limited marriages, the third provided, quote, the charm in the person of Russell R. Jones. Russell was a member of the Buffalo Soldiers and a loving husband for over 24 years. These four individuals spent many years together as a foursome, home and family life, building families and business. Helen lost her husband, Alfred, after having enjoyed 56 years of marital bliss, and the quartet became a trio. That status remained in effect until several years later, the trio became a quartet again when joined by an old friend, a member of the Tuskegee Airmen. These four spent many hours as a group attending numerous social and civic events, depending upon the respective person's membership or invitation. 
The more memorable events that were attended were at 11913 Sycamore Street in Grandview, Missouri, the home of Shabrella and Russell R. Jones. Many social e visits, holidays for sure to enjoy the culinary skills Shabrella put into effect, joined by Russell's barbecue treats from the grill. Pound cake, an extra treat by Shabrella, and homemade wine Russell would let you sample. <laughs> treats brought in by the Kennard family, Ben, Joyce, Brett, and Carmen friends and neighbors of the cul-de-sac as well. These are memories we will cherish as the friendly four has been reduced to a lonely pair, first without Russell and now without Shavala. Thank you. Amen. My tribute to Shabrilla. I thank God for Shabrilla. Yeah. I was only about 24 years old, mm -hmm. and she was working for Dr. Belfield. Mm -hmm. She was the office manager there, mm -hmm. and I started working there with her as a dental assistant. Mm -hmm. So I have known her most of my life. I looked to her like she was my second mom. Mm -hmm. she, she even told my mother, that's my daughter. <laughs> that's my Gloria. That's my Gloria. I, you know, we worked together side by side for over 20 years. We laughed together. We enjoyed each other. And she taught me a lot of things. She taught me how to always save money. <laughs> she said, now Gloria, when you work, you make sure you pay yourself first. And, and I never forgot that. I always tried to save a little money. No matter how small amount it, it was, she said, always do that. Always pay yourself first. She even taught me how to uh, decorate my apartment. That was so many years ago. But I'll never forget that. I told my husband about that. Uh -huh. She came over and just rearranged my apartment from the bedroom and made a living room out of it. We, we put wallpaper on the walls, painted, and to me, it was like a little mansion. Uh -huh. I'll never forget that. She really had good taste. Uh, she uh, she uh, even sold me her little Studebaker. <laughs> a little student baker, when I started working there, she had it over 10 years after I was there. Then she got a, another car, and I was so happy to have that little student, red student baker <laughs> in my home, you know. She was, she was just uh, a great person to me. She was a beautiful lady. She was a classy lady. Yeah. She was just... She just, uh, I just can't say everything I, I want to say about her. Sure. She was, uh, Shabrilla was a good person. Yeah. She was not phony. Mm. Yeah. She was for real. Yeah. If you were her friend, nobody could go around talking about you. <laughs> she would put them right in their place. <laughs> she was a true friend to a lot of people. Another thing I must say about Shabrilla that I admired about her, she was a good wife. I just admired the way she was. She was a good wife to Russell. She spoiled our Russell. <laughs> she cooked him good homemade balanced meals every day. She would go home for lunch. Mm -hmm. On her lunch hour, she would go home and start the meal so it would be ready for him in the evening. <laughs> and she always made him a lot of dessert, lemon pie, sweet potato pie, homemade rolls. And I think that's one of the reasons right now I spoil Pastor Phil. <laughs> <laughs> he may not realize, but I spoil him. <laughs> Just like this morning, I got up and cooked him biscuits, uh, uh, fried potatoes and onions, sausage, you know, and eggs. And I spoiled him because I watched Shabrilla. And I just thought that was a good thing. And she was a good housekeeper. Her house was spotless. She she just
concentrated on things that would make uh, Russell happy. Her house was immaculate. Yeah. And she, another thing, she ironed Russell's shirts and starched his pants. She did this for her father, she said. And, and Russell, you know, he was a mechanic. And most mechanics that I knew was all dirty and greasy, <laughs> you know. They seemed like they wore that uniform forever. So I thought mechanics had to look dirty. Russell went out every day, mm -hmm. immaculate, mm -hmm. you know, with an iron, starched iron shirt and pants. Mm -hmm. And I just thought that was so nice. How many of us today starching iron our husband's clothes? Mm -hmm. I know I asked my husband a few times. I thought, I said, I can iron your shirt if you want me to. He said, no, baby, I'll put the thing to the cleaner. But he just, you know, but I wanted to, I knew she, she did that, and I kind of wanted to do his shirt, but he didn't want me to, you know. <laughs> but she worked hard, and I'm going to be finished. She worked hard, and she saved money. And then she told me jokingly, she would say, Gloria, I saved the money. Russell spends the money. <laughs> Russell likes his toys, his Mercedes, his Cadillacs, you know, them little bitty cars, and the boats and stuff like that. But she enjoyed Russell having all those things that he loved. But she would always tell him, I, I saved the money, Glory. And I watched her, and I took that after her. And I know Reverend Holloway, when he went over to see Shavrilla in the casket there, he said, Sister Simple, you got some of your dressing from Shavrilla, didn't you? <laughs> Just like that. Yes. I love Shavrilla. I love my Shavrilla. She was an inspiration in my life, and I love Shavirla so much, but I know she is not suffering anymore, and I just thank God that he let me be a part of her life. I uh, love you, Shavirla. I'll never forget you. Amen. Amen. See some good things that wives do. <laughs> My name is Reverend Keith Cordier, Sr. I'm the pastor at Christ Our Redeemer African Methodist Episcopal Church. And on the behalf of Christ Our Redeemer African Methodist Episcopal Church, we just, we're sad, but we're, as well as we are, glad. Yeah. We're sad because we realize God must call all his children home. That's right. Amen. Right. Amen. But we're glad because Sister Rita Whitney had introduced us to an angel. Uh -huh. And when she brought her to Christ our Redeemer, she just brought a whole different spirit with her. Yeah. A loving spirit. Yeah. She, uh, Sister Jones was just a delight to have and mm. to see whenever she came. Yeah. Uh, she, yeah. she enjoyed worship. Yeah. She uh, loved to give words of encouragement. Mm -hmm. And she was just a person that you gravitated to. Yeah. Yeah. There was a certain spirit about her yeah. that you just like said, I need to talk to her. <laughs> Amen. And, uh, yeah. and she was a uh, very good mind. Yeah. And we we really enjoyed her entire church huh. that uh, got a chance to interact with her. Yeah. And we're just so grateful that the Lord gave us a short period of time to just get to know her. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, she she had strong faith. She believed in prayer. Hmm. She would even call sometime. I, I say now, just no matter what time it is, this is my call, you can call me. Uh -huh. hmm. And and she I guess she tested me because she called me a few times. <laughs> <laughs> and we prayed and and I just felt that it was a great relief. It was it was it was a blessing to her, yeah. and so if there's anything that I know that Christ our Redeemer family would take with them is first of all is understanding that we are all brothers and sisters and children of God, right? Mm -hmm. right. And we have a way of how we should interact with each other and how we should love on each other. Mm -hmm. And I believe she leave behind some great memories hmm. of how to do that. Yeah. And uh, again, she's going to be solely missed, Lord. but I can also smile every time I think of her. Yeah. And that's a good thing. Yeah. 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 
And you all have a blessed morning. Amen. 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 about the uh, the uh, was it wine a home brew or something mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> and he uh, uh, wanted me to try some of that <laughs> and I, I, I declined but uh, <laughs> but they both were fine people and we're here today uh, we were we stood here uh, four or five years ago with Russell mm -hmm. uh, as we done his eulogy I uh, remember speaking with Brother Brett about it, helping me through it. And, but Sister Jones was a fine person uh, as I got to know her. She was a fine person. As my wife related some of the things that I can attest that uh, I know it must have came from her. Mm -hmm. uh, some of the things that she done, and she would always talk about uh, Sister Jones, how she was a help to her and taught her many things. And uh, I never will forget, uh, uh, we, uh, right after Brother Jones passed, uh, I think uh, someone, Sister Jones, or someone called, and she was at uh, another hospital, and we went out to visit with her. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, she was a little upset. And mm -hmm. she, she meant, told me, don't, uh, I'm what I am. Mm -hmm. Said, I don't want you to think that I'm phony or nothing, but I'm upset. Mm -hmm. And I could appreciate that mm -hmm. because she didn't. She said, I know you're a preacher, but I'm upset. <laughs> <laughs> she said, I'm not, uh, not going to try to act like somebody that I'm not. I'm upset and I'm showing it. <laughs> and she did. And after she got through, we, uh, we went on uh, with the prayer and everything about the Lord. But she expressed her anger and everything yeah. and uh, and then we always visited uh, we was out uh, a few months ago and visited with her uh, out to the hospital and as uh, Mr. Corman said that she was going through some things but she mentioned that she loved the Lord Amen. and that she didn't have no fear Amen. of going to be with the Lord Amen. and I remember uh, that they invited us to uh, I think Sister Jones was part of a club, and they invited us to a banquet or something that they had, and uh, we had, uh, had, 
hadn't been home, my wife and I had been married, and uh, Russell, by the way, gave her away. But on this particular time, they uh, uh, had the uh, banquet and they had a, they danced, and uh, Russell uh, danced with my wife, and then uh, they played a slow song. <laughs> and uh, Russell asked her to go out and, and dance with him. And uh, I guess Sister Jones, I don't know, she looked at me and said, don't worry. Uh, he's like a father to her. <laughs> so I don't know what she meant, but it didn't bother me. <laughs> Always looked at it as he was a father figure, and she was also. But certainly we uh, thank God for the life that she lived. She touched many lives because she was that uh, kind of person. But I want you to know, family, that uh, God loves you and he cares for you. And if you look to him at this hour, uh, he will take care of you. You've suffered a loss, but I want you to know that all is not lost. God has a way of pulling us together uh, when it seems like all hope is gone. So I say to you today to cast your cares upon him, for he cares for you. I'm going to be very brief. Uh, I want to look in the uh, uh, Second Corinthians chapter number five, verse uh, number eight. And I thank God for all of those who came forth and spoke so well about uh, Sister Jones. Uh, Second Corinthians uh, chapter number five, uh, verse eight says. We are confident, I say, and willing rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. Uh, again, I said that uh, Sister Jones lived her life. But I want to talk a minute about uh, God giving provision for the body and the soul. God given provision for the body and the soul. Amen. And you know every uh, one of us spends time thinking about death. For the word death carries with it the idea of mystery and lonely separation and a final uh, going and no return. My wife and I some time ago were talking about that we needed to get some things in order, do some more preparation, because everyone thinks about death sometime, or the final going and no return. And this thing of being absent from the body and present with the Lord is one of the finest scriptures in the New Testament. Well, it clears up our thinking about death. Paul says uh, we would uh, we are confident, I say, and willing rather to be absent from the body than to be present with the Lord. God has made provisions for the body and the soul. And now absent from the body. When you see uh, Sister Jones there, you didn't really see her. You just saw what was left of her. You saw her shell. That wasn't her. Sister Jones has already gone to be with the Lord. As a matter of fact, uh, if you would allow the Spirit of God to inform you of some things, you'll be, begin to hear her say, they'll take care of themselves. <laughs> right now, I'm enjoying the Lord, the one that comforted me in the midnight hours, the one that was with me when no one else could be with me, the one that gave me peace uh, when I had trouble, the one that gave me joy when everything was falling in around me. She's talking to him now. She's not here. Uh, she had joy, and this is not her. This is only her remains. Mm -hmm. Absent from the body, present with the Lord. Yeah. You see, when a Christian leaves their body, uh, it brings about the condition of death. But it's never death for the body, but death for the soul. Death is not the, the destroy the inhabitants of the body, it just takes down the house, the dwelling place in which the person lives. But uh, 
God put the soul and body together in the first place. And eventually, he'll do it again. And the Christian will then return uh, the whole individual God has designed and desired for them in the beginning. Because in Genesis uh, chapter 2, verse 7, it tells us that God uh, breathed uh, life in the nostrils of man and became a living soul. Now present with the Lord. When a Christian is absent from their body, they are with the Lord. Amen. And the process called death uh, has separated the soul uh, from the body. And though the body remains with us, like Sister Jones here today, the soul returns immediately uh, to the Lord. You see, death is a release to the soul. Uh, Sister uh, Coleman. Uh, mentioned to uh, me that Sister Jones told her that she was tired, that she was ready to go home. And she wanted to see her brother that she never uh, met before and some of the other family members. You see, death is a release, a removal from a tired, sickly, worn body to be free from all of that which the flesh uh, had, the pain, the misery, the suffering. Sister Jones is free now. No more pain. No more suffering. And thank God that he loved her enough that he set her free Amen. from all that she was going through. Amen. She's free now. Yeah. She doesn't have the pain that she had. Mm -hmm. She doesn't have the misery that she was in. And Paul said, I would rather be absent from the body and present with the Lord. And what he was saying is that when this old building, this old body gets a leak in it, when this flesh and blood began to drill down, when I'm aching with pain, and when I feel trapped, the Lord calls us out of this shape to be with him. And he said, I'd rather be present with the Lord because there is joy in the presence of the Lord. The psalmist said, I was glad when they said unto us, let us go into the house of the Lord. And I want you to know that when you're in the presence of Jesus, there's peace. There's peace. Amen. There's happiness. Yeah. And I'm sure that Sister Jones could say and sing the song that after all that I've been through, yeah. I still have joy. Yeah. I was sick, but I still have joy. Yeah. I had trouble, but I still had joy. Yeah. She had joy because she was in the presence of the Lord. When we went out to see her at the hospital, she lifted us up. Amen. She always had a good spirit and word of encouragement for us because she had the presence of the Lord in their life. Yes. And, and when you have the presence of the Lord in your life, he'll give you rest. Yes. Jesus said, uh, come unto me all ye that labor, and I'll give you rest. And he said even to the family today that he'll be your burden back. He's saying, I can bear your, your burdens today if you would give it to him. And uh, uh, to be present with the Lord is more than words could ever say. Absent from the body, present with the Lord. This is the hope of every Christian. Because Amen. the psalm says, my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and his righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest friend, but holy leaning. Oh, Jesus' name. Now, how does one make sure and certain of the hope? Well, Jesus said here in John 14, uh, verse 1, 2, and 3. He said, let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house. Now, there's got to be a house somewhere. somewhere. He said, in my Father's house, there are many mansions. If it was not so, I wouldn't have told you. He said, I go and prepare a place for you, and if I go, I'll come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. When the hour came that the Lord said Sister Jones had to come home, it was the Lord that took her to be with him. Mm -hmm. The psalm says, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, thou art with me. The Lord was with her. When she went home, he took her to be home with him uh, where she can have everlasting life. 
Thank God that he loved her. Then it goes on in verse 6 and says, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man come to the Father but by me. And one of the greatest experiences possible for any man, woman, boy, or girl is to become one with Jesus. Amen. To save their soul and to save them from Jesus and to personally invite him in your life to save your soul. He'll save you today. And when this happens, one becomes a Christian. Separation of the soul and body. The soul already one with God simply continues with him in one place. And the body is carried to the grave, put in the ground as we will do, Sister Jones, to wait the moment when God will unite soul and body again. And we do not know what kind of person we'll be, but we know we will see Jesus mm -hmm. just as he is. And we do not sorrow as people with no hope, but let us give time for the promise and the provision that God has made for us, not only for this life, but for the life to come. You see, this is really not the funeral. It's a celebration. It's in memory of Sister Joan. Yes. It's a service for those of us that remain. It's not a funeral. Sister Joan has already lived her life but there's someone here that haven't given their life to the Lord. This service is not for Sister Joan. She lived her life. She given her life to the Lord. But there's someone here today that has not given their life to the Lord. This service is for those that remain to let you know that God has given you another opportunity, another chance to get your house and your life in order. Amen. You got to prepare to die as well as you prepare to live. Yes. And when God called all of us, hmm. has to be ready. Yes. He's going to call all of us one of these days. All of us yes. are going to have to be where Sister Joan played. But the difference is if we're ready to meet the Lord. Yes. And who can say uh, what's going to happen tomorrow? Hmm. Can you say in your heart of hearts today that if he called you today, if he called you tonight, can you say in your heart that my heart is ready to meet the Lord? Yeah. He's going to call us all to be with him. I believe Sister Jones is with the Lord. Amen. Where there's everlasting joy, everlasting peace, everlasting life. I believe she's with him because she's given her heart to the Lord. And the way we can do it, Romans 10 and 9 tells us how we can prepare to meet the Lord. It says, if thou shalt confess with thy mouth, the Lord Jesus, and believe in thy heart, thou art saved. You have to be prepared and ready now. And God reminds us that life is given and death is sure. And we must all prepare for it. And it's not a matter of whether we feel like preparing it or not. God wakes us and shakes us every day to a brand new day. And every now and then, we ought to wake up and say, Lord, thank you. You've given me a chance to do something today that I didn't do yesterday. Yeah. Lord, if I turn my back on you yesterday, if I turn my back on you last night, yeah. help me to do what I need to do today yeah. to get my house in order. And when you do that, you're talking about a source of comfort. When you're standing watching your loved one depart from you to know that uh, when we've all got our house in order, that it's not a funeral, it's a home going. It's a celebration that we're going to have a reunion one of these days. We'll be able to meet Sister Jones and Brother Russell and all of them that have gave their life to the Lord. We'll be able to meet them when we have prepared our hearts to meet the Lord. You're talking about a reunion to know that it's not a permanent goodbye that we're saying to Sister Jones. It's just temporary. Because the songs say when we all get to heaven, we're going to sing and shout the victory. When we all see Jesus, oh, it's going to be a great day. I believe that Sister Jones is with the Lord. I believe that she's walking on streets of gold right now. And the real question is today, as I get ready to close, if he call you today, can you say in your heart of hearts that my life is ready? 
We prepare for everything down here, but we fail to prepare for the life to come. We're here today and gone tomorrow. We prepare educationally. Look in our closet. We have to stand there 15 minutes to see what we're going to wear. But we fail to prepare for the life that we're going to live forever and ever. But he's letting us know that one of these days, he's going to call us. I'm not worried about Sister Joan. Now, she lived her life. Thank God that she's with the Lord. No more pain. No more suffering. No more sorrow. Thank God for it. She's free. Amen. I'm, I'm somewhat jealous right now. I still got to be here and face the troubles of this world. Amen. Amen. But she's over. It's all over. She's given her life. So we thank God for Sister Jones. Family, I want to say to you that uh, Sister Jones was a great person. Amen. You had a great aunt, a great friend. She was a great person. I thank God that I had the opportunity to be able to meet her and be able to uh, come in contact with her. And I surely thank God that she had a part in my wife's life hmm. that made her the wife that she is. So I thank God for that. God bless you and God keep you as I pray. Let us have a word of prayer. Our Father and our God, I come now and I want to thank you, oh God, for Sister Jones. I thank you for the life that she lived, oh God. Thank you for the many lives that she touched on the way. As we've heard various people, Lord, come forth and speak how good and how influence she had, the influence she had on her life. Thank you, O oh God. We pray in the name of Jesus that you will comfort the hearts of this family, Lord. Let them know that weeping might endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Give them strength, Lord, when all of the phone calls stop. Everyone stop coming around, Lord. Let them know you'll be with them. You'll never leave nor forsake them. And we thank you and we praise you. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. All right, God bless you. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. Lift it, put it up on that front roller there. Hold on, hold on. Ready? Thank you very much. You know, to the cemetery, come up to the hearse as soon as possible. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot enter the kingdom of God, neither do uh, corruption enter incorruption. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in the moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump. For the trump shall sound, and the dead shall rise uh, incorruptible, and we shall be changed for this Corruptible must put on incorruptible, and this mortal must put on immortal. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruptible, and this mortal shall put on immortal, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? The grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thank be unto God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain. For as much as it has pleased Almighty God in his wise providence, to take out of this world unto himself the soul of our deceased dear sister, Sister Jones. We therefore commit her body to the grave. Earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. For I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Write, Blessed is the dead which die in the Lord, and henceforth said the Spirit that they may rest from their labor 
and their works do follow them. Reverend Joshua will give us the prayer. Lord God, we thank you for this day, oh God. We ask you, oh God, to continue, oh God, to watch over this family, oh God, in the time of bereavement, oh God. Uh, give them strength, oh God, to the days to the, uh, ahead, oh Lord. We thank you, and we'll be so careful to give you the praise, the glory, and the honor. In Jesus' name, amen and thank God. I want to say to the family, thank you again for giving me the honor to be able to have something to say for Sister Jones. I thank the family. I want you to know that we love you, we care for you, and if you need us, Sister Coleman and the rest of the family, feel free to call us. God bless you and God keep you. Thank you, Amen. Yes, thank you very much. There, let's say that there is a recast dinner at the Gates Restaurant on Brunch immediately following, and all of you are welcome to attend. Praise the Lord. Those, those bird of paradise and give them to Carmen.